inside that unit. To flea markets, where it gets sold. It's time for a hot pursuit. Itching to get your hands on the latest smartphone? And these guys are snatching them up. It's a huge, huge problem. How about an expensive mountain bike? They looked interested. He's looking for a steal on wheels. He just cut the lock. Or maybe it's a shiny new six-string guitar. Musical instruments get stolen all the time. He's thinking this looks right for the picking. There's a special place in hell for people that steal musical instruments. But tonight, sticky fingers. Little do they know we have tracking devices on everything. Who went searching for a big score. Is this America's dumbest criminals or what? And wound up getting more than they bargained for. You thought you weren't going to get caught, huh? Because when they steal it. On the move. On on the move. We track it. There she is right there. To the packed warehouses, crammed to the rafters with recovered wheels. So get ready. 2020's chase is on. No, oh, it was in the storage facility. Hot pursuit. Here now, Elizabeth Vargas and David Muir. Good evening. Right here tonight, we're taking you inside a huge black market like you have never seen before, and you're part of it. An entire underground economy made up of stolen goods. In fact, your stolen goods, everything from bikes to tablets to iPhones. But tonight, right here, where it actually goes, all the hands it passes through from when it gets snatched off the street to when it gets resold. And it's prime time for it, too. The FBI saying that robberies skyrocket during the holiday season of December and January. But tonight, how you can keep your Christmas gifts safe as we show you how to catch a thief. Actually, a bunch of them. Here's Gio Benitez in Hot Pursuit. <laughs> The city of San Francisco. Many have left their hearts here, but leave anything else and, well, name it. We heard it over the past six months. Cell phones, computers, bikes, even guitars, all stolen. Living in a big city, theft is just a part of city life. Random theft, you know, bike. Cars. My antenna on my car has been stolen. Break-ins. Everyone gets their bike stolen. The victims of these crimes rarely ever see their stuff again until tonight. It's time for a hot pursuit. We thought it was high time to turn the tables. So we got a bunch of merchandise, brand new tablets, high-end purses, these expensive Marin bikes, and a shiny six-string. They brought five bicycles to me and a, a really nice acoustic guitar. Next, we visit Jason Cecchettini. He's a professional tracker. I think that'll work nice. I think we can fit a small tracking transmitter in here very easily. I don't think we'll have any problem getting it stolen. And when it is snatched... You hear that, guys? We got a signal. Jason's technology goes way beyond regular GPS software. He's armed with a radio receiver that can pinpoint our loot within a few feet. That signal will lead us right to where the transmitter is located. Our plan? To drop our tempting merchandise all over the city with Jason's little surprise inside. Little do they know we have tracking devices on everything. <laughs> and there's one more thing. And we're going to have all of our hidden cameras also here. We'll be watching it all unfold from this control set. This is like one of the hottest spots to get a bike ripped off. And 2020's mobile command van, which we've camouflaged to blend in with this urban terrain. Today, I'm picking up dirty laundry. We have an ETA of five minutes. But we begin our hunt for crooks high atop Lombard Street, considered the crookedest street in the world. Geo is on location. Do you copy? As we arrive, I decide to leave this Samsung tablet in the backseat of this red cab. Will the cabbie keep it, or will it be returned? The tablet is in the red cab. Command van copy. The cab may be gone, but that tablet's inside, and we're tracking it. I'm also here to pick up one of our Marin bait bikes. This bad boy is worth upwards of $1,000. But first, my crazy attempt to navigate whoa, down these eight tight hairpin turns. Oh, man. A little too dangerous for me. He's walking his bike down. He's having a hard time doing the hill. Frank 26, uh, Friedman and Chang. Officer Matt Friedman walks the mean streets and back alleys of San Francisco every day. You got to go. This isn't a place to hang out. This is the 2000 block of Mission. Bike theft in San Francisco isn't just a nuisance, it's an epidemic. 
Many victims depend on their bikes as their primary mode of transportation. Guys like app developer Greg Schuler. I've been robbed a total of four times. Eight bicycles stolen out of my garage. You hear stories all the time as their bike's been ripped off two, three, four, and five times. Schuler is so fed up. I just don't know what I need to do to get the attention about this issue, and I'm just really frustrated. So he began recording his break-ins. These are the last three caught on camera, yet no arrests, no leads. At least we could see the person that did it. And where do a lot of stolen bikes end up? Here, on the outskirts of San Francisco, past an old abandoned naval yard. This is the evidence warehouse where they keep all these bikes. There's a sprawling police warehouse. How many bikes do you think are in here? 500. About 500 bikes. And if you want to know how big the problem is here in San Francisco, just look. These images speak volumes. Just bike after bike after bike after bike after bike. Some estimated to be worth thousands. Others simply unique to their owner. Look at this right here, this furry purple bike. Most of these bikes will never be returned. All of these are stolen, we're told, and then eventually recovered by police, and they all end up right here. Other Hot Wheels get stripped down and sold for parts, making the evidence harder to trace and easier to resell. Where'd you get the wheels? Trade, right. There's a thousand of these guys running around the city stripping bikes. Hey! Nowhere is the booming economy for bike parts more stunning Come down. than right here, beneath this freeway underpass in the city's mission district. How come you're taping up the frame? It's a makeshift chop shop. A little detail work, huh? Just have a seat. Okay, sir. And it's where we meet this wheeler dealer named okay. Junior, who gave us the skinny on the scene. Why don't you get your stuff together and go, okay? That's my choice if I want to buy it or not, because I've been arrested three times for uh, receiving stolen property. I'm buying from people that, people, I don't know where they get it from. Look right there, there's like one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you can't even count it really because there's just all these different parts, all these bike parts just sort of hanging out there and uh, eventually somebody's gonna buy them. Junior telling us he sells bike rims like these for pennies on the dollar. One of these wheels right here, uh, the stores is probably like like 80 bucks. Over here is like, like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. He is out here every day dealing with this stuff. And you're scratching off the serial number at the same time you cut the tape. Do me a favor, stand back. And it's very hard to prove possession of stolen property when you're dealing with bike parts and people don't report their frames stolen. If any of this is making your blood boil, get a load of this. There's at least five wheels in there, right? Last month, Californians passed Prop 47, reducing penalties and sentencing for nonviolent crimes from felonies to mere misdemeanors. Where'd you get your bike at? It was controversial among local law enforcement. Sit over against the wall. And if you think Junior is one of those nonviolent criminals just down on his luck, domestic violence, possession of stolen property. Um, you know, the guys, he's got a long and lengthy rap sheet. A lot of those guys do. That brings us back to Greg Schuler's garage. He's ready to fight back, allowing us to wheel in one of our bait bikes loaded with that high-tech tracking equipment. We've been robbed so many times, I'm not quite sure that someone's gonna come back another time. We were skeptical at first, too. Could yet another break-in really happen again? When we come back... Hi, I'd like to report a burglary that happened last night. Our bait bike gone. Saw the bike that was sitting here. Grabbed this, quickly took it to the door. And our tracker on the hunt. You hear had a beep. You had a beep. Next. Follow the trail, tracking a stolen bike to a secret location out of town. That's the bicycle all it has. And another thief gets caught red-handed. You're not in a happy place right now, man. When Hot Pursuit returns. Now, back to 2020's Hot Pursuit with Gio Benitez.
There's a plague in San Francisco, and this is the epicenter. We're in the Mission District, the heart of an incurable rash of bike thefts. They will probably cut the cable off, take the bike, and ride away. This is Roll Call at Mission Station, where local police have launched their own bait bike program. If someone's arrested, everyone will go back to Mission Station. This is basically a bypass operation, guys. Today, they're working with 2020 to catch a thief in the act. They dirty up one of our pristine bait bikes, so it doesn't look brand new. Use one of their guys in plain clothes to plant our wheels. All units, uh, bike drop. There he is. I just activated the GPS trackers. Command van to all units, we have first bike drop at 1147. And have undercover cops stationed all around this plaza at 16th and Mission. For their safety, we're blurring their faces. Undercover with the bike, you guys have my signal good? That's affirmative. Will someone be so brazen to actually attempt to steal a thousand dollar bike in broad daylight? Okay, 10 4 Alu. We lie in wait. If you're looking down, it would be to the left of the chase vehicle. Copy, I got him. The cops are perched in this office right above the bike rack. I'll let you know when I have eyes on. Our eye in the sky, this robotic hidden camera. How far out can you zoom back? And we're monitoring it all from our trusty mobile command van. It doesn't take long. These guys are coming back. They're looking, really analyzing it. Within minutes, the sharks begin to circle. It seemed like one of the one of those guys had a tool tucked into his shirt. But who will bite the bait? Let's zoom in on this guy here. Do you guys have eyes on him right now? Yes. This guy seems curious, but walks away, only to reappear several minutes later. That guy in the uh, gray shirt and the green shorts looked right at the bike and passed it twice. It's five past noon. The bike has been sitting there barely an hour when suddenly... Latin male, blue t-shirt, he just cut the lock. Here we go, here we go. On the move, on the move. He's got it. On the move, on the move. There he goes. He's on that bike, and boy can he pedal. In the northwest corner of 16th and Harrison. Chase vehicle has him, he just took a left. He's right in that area, 16th and Harrison. You got any weapons? The suspect is in custody. Police finally put the brakes on this crook's joy rock. Okay. Why'd you do it? We saw you walk by twice, look at that bike, and you had to come back to get it, huh? His name is Lonnie Pierce, and he's no stranger to cops. In fact, he's on Matt Friedman's wall of shame, people previously arrested for bike theft. It's not your first time, is it? Was it worth all of this? A bike? So that's one bike ripped off and recovered. But how about that one in Greg Schuler's garage? Our cameras are rolling for just 32 hours when this burglar comes creeping. Hi, I'd like to report a burglary that happened last night. This morning when he came in, uh, he decided to push the door open. He didn't have to do any additional breaking of this door. It's like getting your car stolen, but almost a little more personal. We just need to find some way to get to the bottom of who is doing these thefts. Well, it's usually because the bikes are the quickest that they can stop. He came around here, put the bike over there, leaned it against the trash can. That's possibly his palm print right there. I saw the bike that was sitting here, grabbed this, quickly took it to the door, and quickly uh, exited through the door. While the cops look for a thief, we want to know what's happened to that stolen bike. The chase is on. We are in hot pursuit. So what do we know about Greg's bike? Well, it was stolen about 5 o'clock this morning, just before 5 o'clock. And uh, it was rid ridden around San Francisco for about 20 minutes. And taken here to UN Plaza. Amazingly, just steps from City Hall, a well-known black market right under the mayor's nose where stolen stuff gets fenced. In the light of day, so you got eggplants on this side, you got pies on this side. Farmer's market. Farmer's market, everybody's here. Ray Kilroy is a former San Francisco police lieutenant working as a consultant for 2020. But what happens over there? Just you name it, we can buy it. 
hot iPhones, iPads, jewelry, and all too often, freshly stolen bikes. Yeah, you can see there's a, uh, a large group of uh, bike people who are just looking to buy bikes, and then there's another group that are the electronic buyers. Mm -hmm. Not an officer. <laughs> Not an officer. <laughs> Guys like Phil, who openly told us here in UN Plaza, there's a don't ask, don't tell policy. It's basically a swap shop. Yeah. You know, people get things and they come over here and sell them. So we got all these officers here. They don't do anything. Else. Can they do anything? They you bring in. But just as Phil spoke those very words, they steal it, they sell it, you buy it. Cops were questioning this guy in possession of, yeah, another stolen bike. We don't even need a tracking device for this one because no. the, the cops are coming here and they're seeing it. They're seeing that bike, they're looking at it and they know it's stolen. Police don't make an arrest here because they say they can't prove this guy is the actual thief. So he so he just walks away because you can't really. He's on probation. If he's he's the one that stole it, they get the warrant out for his arrest and take him into custody. But even when a thief is caught on camera red-handed, they're often a step ahead. We know our bait bike was stolen from Greg Schuler's garage just before dawn and brought to UN Plaza. An hour later, it was shipped out of the city, out of police jurisdiction. And it appears that it's in a storage facility. In a storage facility in Oakland. But this time, we are right on their heels. We know the exact location of that storage facility. He rolled in the gate of the storage unit at 547. You had a beep. You had a beep. That's the bicycle hollering at us. We tip off the cops. I'm 100% sure that it's inside that unit. But will they make it to this warehouse in time? When we come back, it's not just bikes, but musical instruments that are in hot demand. Oh, you're seeing the tracker now. Well, I didn't see nothing but 20 bucks. When 2020's hot pursuit continues. So have you ever had your bike or laptop stolen? And more importantly, did the police help you get it back? Let us know on Facebook and Twitter. Gio's also live tweeting with us tonight. Use the hashtag ABC2020. And Elizabeth and I will be right back. Hot Pursuit continues. Once again, Gio Benitez. If you're going to say just like the famous Scott McKenzie song says. Ever since the days of the flower children, Haight Ashbury's been the musical heart of San Francisco. And tonight at the Milk Bar here, what they're playing might as well be the anthem for Hot Pursuit. But that night you broke into my car, stole my first damn favorite guitar. When it you stole a large piece of my heart. It's called My Stolen Guitar, written by Sam Chase after someone swiped a lot more than just his instrument. It was his first guitar, his livelihood, his passion. So there's a special place in hell for you with my guitar never finds her way. I think there's a special place in hell for people that steal musical instruments specifically because it's not like we make a whole lot of money doing this. Musicians are here because they love to make music. It's like a million other theft stories in the city. It started with Sam just parking his car. It was the middle of the day and I had my guitar in the back of the car. I parked it in a pretty nice neighborhood. Not nice enough. When he returned, his eyes saw the broken glass and he started singing the blues. It was that gut-wrenching feeling to know that something that I cherish so much I was never going to see again. All he has now is the song. We know there's a special place in hell if you ever heard anyone like me again. Once you have your instrument stolen and you start talking about it with other musicians, you realize that everybody here has had their instrument stolen. Would you believe this high school marching band playing before a Giants game had dozens of instruments stolen from the parking lot outside? It's heartbreaking. And then there's accomplished violinist Emily Cox. Never really been a victim of crime before. I was pretty vanilla. She was studying at the famed San Francisco Conservatory of Music the proud owner of a $20,000 violin bought for her by her parents. It's 
irreplaceable. Never imagining she was at risk, she left her treasure in this practice room when she went for a quick walk down the hall. It was plenty of time for a thief lurking inside. He snatched the violin, hustled out the doors, and down the block to a nearby metro station. Only one problem. That's her boy. Surveillance cameras were rolling when he boarded this train. That's Emily's violin case strapped to his back. She says her violin is insured, but that's not the point. After intense media coverage, about two weeks later, the man dropped the violin off at this nearby church. I couldn't believe that I had actually gotten it back. Could we recover a stolen instrument? We wanted to find out. So we bought that shiny new Fender acoustic at the renowned Haight-Ashbury guitar shop. That will be 489 And brought it to our tracker, Jason Cecchettini. I think that'll work nice. Next, we carefully apply labels to the guitar with a name and phone number to contact, so anybody who wanted to return it surely could. Now, after a final check of the tracking device, we're good to go. We put the guitar in this muscle car and head back to Haight Ashbury. They are We left it like an absent-minded musician might. Doors unlocked, windows down, and the guitar in plain view on the passenger seat. It seems quite amazing that somebody might steal something, even though a lot of people are walking by, but you never know. We get some lookers. But no takers. Until we move the car to another spot. You are talking with the guitar right now. Exactly. <laughs> I'm talking with the guitar right now, live. It's early morning, not even 8 a.m., but this woman and her partner are ready for some finger picking, while our guitar gently weeps. Just got a text message telling me that it's moving. They think they're making off with easy money. All right, let's go. But we are in hot pursuit as the stolen six string disappears around the corner. So we're definitely getting closer to the guitar at this point. Within minutes, we come face to face with a woman who filched our fender. There she is right there. But she no longer has it. Hey there. Where's that guitar? The guitar you were caught on camera stealing from the car? Well, uh... Busted. Well, we're with ABC News, and we've been tracking that guitar. Really? Yeah. Can I give it back without getting a penalty? You should give it back. She calls herself Smiley. She tells us she sold the guitar to someone else who has already tried to pawn it at a shop right next to where we're standing. How much money did you get for it? Like 20 bucks. You sold it for 20 bucks. Smiley was honest, and, uh, and that's what's really interesting about all of this. The guy who stole the bike, he knew what he did, but he certainly didn't want to talk about it. Smiley did. She talked about it, she said what she did, and she helped get it back. Let's get that guitar back. Pawn shops once were loaded with stolen goods, but cops tell us no more. Here, they went by the book. They were going to alert the police about the guitar. Instead, they happily turn it over to us. There's the guitar. Oh my God. You hadn't even seen it. No. It so, could have been the case. Give me $20, I don't know. Well, can I have it, take it to jail with me? Do you realize that you wanted 20 bucks for it and it's worth about 400? That you recovered it? Good on you. It's probably a nice guitar. <laughs> It's worth keeping, you know, it's worth getting it back. Oh, look, if you look on the inside, you'll see that it's a tracker on it. Oh, you're seeing the tracker now. Well, I didn't see nothing but 20 bucks. I apologize. There it is right there. Hi, I'm right here. <laughs> That's up. Right there. Is this America's dumbest criminals or what? In no time, though, Smiley goes from making us laugh to touching our hearts. I, it could have been a setup or whatever, but I was really hungry. I was hungry and I wanted some drugs. She tells us she stole because of her addiction to drugs and recent struggles in life. So you're in a hard place. Yeah, I've been in a hard place for a while. I'm just gonna self-destruct. I hate it here. Are you learning right now? I learn every step of the way. We will check in with Smiley again later. But first, 
we're gonna have to go down the alley. I think the purse is moving. Some high-tech hijinks as we play Lost and Found with these purses and tablets. There you go, sir. And a hot pursuit right here that leads us from a theater to a dumpster. It's inside that trash compactor. To an apartment across the bay. It's right there. Can I talk to you for a second? When 2020's hot pursuit continues. Twenty twenty is in hot pursuit. Here again, Gio Benitez. If there's one thing we thought for sure would get stolen here in San Francisco, it's a tablet like this. After all, the statistics are staggering. Every 53 seconds, a laptop is stolen in this country, and about three million phones a year are also stolen. I just never thought something like that can happen to me. Ariane Moon was going through a common San Franciscan ritual, sitting in this cafe in the rapidly gentrifying Tenderloin neighborhood, working on her computer under the waft of fair trade beans. Next to her, an unassuming patron. I didn't pay too much attention to her. Moon was comfortable in her surroundings, perhaps a little too comfortable. Watch what happens when she gets up to go to the bathroom. That woman in the striped sweater sitting next to her springs into action. My computer and my iPhone were gone. The video of the theft was posted online and ended up going viral, leading eventually to the woman getting busted. Public places have to be safe enough to where you trust your neighbor. But are they? We wanted to put brotherly love to the test in a very public place. Why not try to get the stolen here at Fisherman's Wharf? After all, where there's tourists, there's gotta be thieves, right? Using our tablets and purses equipped with tracking devices and contact information affixed, we set up shop at Lou's Fish Shack, where the staff is ready and eager to help us reel in any criminal catches. When we sit guests down, we always let them know that they shouldn't have their phones on the table. Good advice we're going to ignore. You're ready to go. Our sting is simple. I take a seat outside and bask in the San Franciscan sun while scrolling through the newsfeed, ringing the dinner bell, if you will. After a few minutes, it's time to leave the table. Fisherman one, she has left the table. She has left the table, roger that. And whoops, I leave my tablet behind. Almost immediately, the abandoned tablet is spotted. Women eyeing tablet. Guys checking out tablet. But then something happens that would make Ariane Moon proud. People are concerned about the orphan device, stopping, pointing, looking for the odor. This woman even picks it up and brings it to the manager. Time to up the ante. We send out one of our producers to add a purse to the mix. We have movement, we have movement. But once again, good Samaritans swoop in before any thieves in the area can pounce. There's a lot of action on that sidewalk right now. We decide to ditch the table and put the bag and tablet really out in the open. Yeah, that tablet is clearly visible, it's sticking out. On the sidewalk, fail. How about the top of that newspaper stand? Fail. We can't give this sucker away. One of our do-gooders, Vanessa Terran, maybe spoke for all of our honest citizens. So this was open right on the table, and you grabbed it, but you didn't take it. You brought it back to a manager here. Why? Um, I, don't even, I didn't even question it. I know that somebody would be back for it and would want it, and I would want mine. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> and the good vibrations continue. Remember the tablet I left inside the taxi I exited on Lombard Street? We drop it off, I get out of the car, what happens? Shortly after that, I get a text message saying, please call me. And that's all it said. It said, please call me. That's it. That's it. So all hopefully right. it's the guy who has a tablet. And you know where it is right now. I know exactly where it is. We arrive where Jason has pinpointed the signal. Geo, yes. it appears that it is in this building right here. Time to call the mystery number. And yeah, it's our cabbie. Yes, yes, I did leave my tablet. You're not at the, in the city? The tablet's here. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. But he isn't. So the next day, the driver comes to our hotel and drops off the tablet, so free of charge. So look at that. This is an honest cabbie who called us, and, and there you go. He just dropped it off right in front of our hotel. We tried the tablet two more times in the back of cabs, and wouldn't you know, Hi. two more honest cabbies contacted us and promptly returned the devices. You need to honest, this is not my, it's my customer. 
There you go, sir. Thank you very much. It was the same with the purse we left at the Castro Theater. Your lost purse is in the manager's office of the Castro Theater. It was returned to us with the tablet inside. Okay, so I'm going to activate the transmitter into the... Uh... We were about to give up when we decide to give it one more try at this AMC theater. And then, bingo, our purse goes missing. Right here. We've actually tracked a radio signal to the trash compactor right behind this door, and it's either the light blue purse or the leather cover for the tablet. And it's inside that trash compactor. After an exhaustive search of the trash compactor, we've identified one particular bag with a pretty strong radio signal. This would be the leather case. So the only thing you found there was that cover. We've let our merchandise wander for four days. Now the signal from the tablet is leading us across the bay. We are heading to the last known address of the tablet computer in Oakland, California. When suddenly, a different signal from another location nearby. I can't believe we're getting a signal from the purse. The purse is transmitting from this apartment building, where, with help from the building's owner, we call the police. Right there. Right above us? Yeah. All right, let's go upstairs. They enter this unit, and voila, out comes our purse. And that's the purse that we spent so much time looking for. So that's, yeah, that's the tracker. That's awesome. Satisfied with the purse recovery, the cops head out. But sadly, there is no sign of that tablet that's also been sending a signal from the same neighborhood. But as we go to leave... Can I talk to you for a second? We come across one of the residents of the apartment. Do you work at the AMC theater? As fate would have it, he works for the cleaning company employed by the theater. So how did the purse end up in his pad? He says someone gave him the purse empty. There was no manager to return it to, so he brought it home, then forgot to bring it back in the days that passed. Police never charged him with any wrongdoing. Next time you find a, a purse or any property, be sure to turn it in to security. And unfortunately for us, that tablet signal soon goes dark. We walked away one tablet down, but we also learned even in a big city, some people are looking out for each other. But there's still that nagging mystery of Greg Schuler's garage and our bike purloined while the cameras rolled after it made a stop at UN Plaza and moved to this storage facility? It left the storage unit. Where will it end up and with who? Yeah, you Gio with ABC News. So where'd you get the bike? Stay with us. Hot Pursuit continues. Once again, Gio Benitez. As the sun rises over California, it's a brand new day and a whole new ball game. So it's got to be beyond these buildings here, huh? Yeah, I think it's on the back side of these buildings. That bike stolen from Greg Schuler's garage has left an Oakland storage facility and is on the move again. So everything changed overnight, man. It's 6 a.m. It's been moving for, what, two hours now? It's at 4.30 this morning. It left the storage unit, and it started moving around. It went directly to the Oakland Coliseum flea market. It's on the move right now. It's 6 a.m. We got to get there, or it might be sold. Just minutes from the home of the Oakland Raiders, a public flea market. Some items are used, and police say others are hot. We're going into the flea market. We go in with hidden cameras rolling, hunting for our bike. Within minutes, we find it for sale and buy it from this man for 200 bucks. We just found the bike, the Marin bike that we were looking for. Now, let's go, guys. You should pull up the, uh, the let's go. It's time for me to get some answers. Gio with ABC News. Camera. I don't appreciate you. So where'd you get the bike? I bought it yesterday. The seller's name is Ricardo Sandino, and we are told he's a regular here. Obviously, he doesn't look like the guy who stole our bike out of Greg Schuler's garage. Still, we wanted to know how he got his hands on it. Because we've been tracking the bike, and the bike was taken from that storage facility, and it was brought there after being taken from a garage. Who did you buy the bike I from? I bought it at the flea market at the San Jose. Uh, no way, San Jose. We know the bike was in that storage facility. Remember, we tracked it there the night before. 
that actually it never went to San Jose. We've been tracking it. In San Jose. How? It, it was in the storage in facility and it was stolen 24 hours? If you would have told me that bike was yours, I'll give it to you for free. But we want more than our bike back. We want payback, literally. Can I get my I, I lose. So yes, can you can. Uh, yes, you can. Right now? Because I didn't know the bike was stolen. All right, so we'll get the 200 bucks. Shut that camera off and I'll give you the 200 bucks. So we got the bike back. That was a tense moment. He kept saying the bike was uh, bought at a San Jose flea market, but <laughs> that's way out there. Uh, that's not what happened here. This bike was never in San Jose. We know that. E4175, that's your bike, man. Huh? That's it. When we went to bed last night, we did not expect this to happen. Just last week, we returned to San Francisco to see what became of all the characters we came across. So we're back at the Coliseum Swap Shop. Uh, this is the flea market where we first met Ricardo. So we're gonna walk through there, see if Ricardo's in there. We were surprised to find Ricardo Sandino a no-show. Let's call Smiley. Piper you have dialed is not in service. We also wonder what happened to the guitar thief we come to know as Smiley. Is this America's dumbest criminals or what? Smiley's not here, Gio. She's gone. She's out of the area. Uh, we've checked all her locations and then show their picture around to all the merchants. And they knew her from before, but they said they hadn't seen her in the last couple of months. Ray Kilroy suggesting that might be a good thing. Maybe confronting Smiley scared her straight? All uh, right, wherever you are, Smiley, good job. Stay out of trouble. But even though Smiley might have retired from her guitar picking, the beat goes on. The San Francisco Conservatory of Music is asking for the public's help after two valuable guitars were stolen. Just a few weeks ago, the San Francisco Conservatory, where Emily Cox had her violin swiped, was hit again. Security cameras catch this thief making off with two pricey guitars, and so far, they're still missing. And so is that tablet from the AMC Theater. The cleaning crew who ended up with our purse? Hello? They didn't want to talk to us anymore. But the theater assures us the conduct described is unacceptable for anyone who sets foot in our theaters. Finally, there's bike thief Lonnie Pierce. You're not in a happy place right now, man. We caught up with him on the same block where he stole our bait bike, claiming he's a new man. Are you keeping clean these days or what's... Yeah. No more bikes. No. No more bikes. As for theft victim Greg Schuler, I wish I could say the situation was getting better, but... It's not getting better. It's not. He is still without his stolen bikes and without answers. He wants to know who was that man who broke into his home? You just want to get this guy. Oh, I would love to get this guy. I would love to get back one of my bikes. I don't see any action with any of these cases at all. Since the last break-in, Schuler has spent thousands turning his home into a fortress, adding this huge wrought iron gate. You got the spikes up there. You, you aren't you yeah. are messing around. A new security system. An alarm system in there now, as you can see. And this metal door to his garage. Inside, you have the cameras. Police say you can also prevent bike theft by writing down your bike's serial number and take pictures of your bike like we did. They also suggest always using a U-lock like this one. Don't depend on cables, they can be snipped. So these guys that we deal with carry around huge amounts of tools and they'll just walk.